All right, so today we're gonna to talk about taking the next step on our AFO fabrication. I have an AFO here in its in its basic shape, meaning it's still, we, we need to take it from where it is now, we need to carve it out of this mold that you see here. There's a plaster underneath this plastic, and so we now have to create this, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna go over just a few of the things an orthotist actually thinks about when creating an AFO, and we're gonna show you how we take after our lines are drawn. We're gonna cut this out and then show you the sanding process and in just a very general in a very general way, just to give you an idea of what it really takes to make these AFOs. So here we go. I have a height set right here. This is for our patient and an orthotist will begin with the height in mind. Now, technically speaking, many people agree that the height of an AFO needs to be 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters distal to the neck of the fibula. Okay, so that's, that's one way to look at it. Usually, if you see it, it's right around the, the, the widest part of the calf or uh, we'll say the fibular head was right here, something around an inch downward from the fibular head. That's, a, that's an approximation, but technically speaking, 20 millimeters distal to the neck of the fibular head. So here's our height, and I'm just gonna go through the process now. So as an orthotist, uh, we're gonna draw our kind of, uh, you'll see what this turns into in a minute. There are different styles of AFOs that we've, we've kind of touched on here in these videos, and I'm going to show you what we mean by the different styles. So if I have more plastic here, the brace gets stronger at the ankle. If I have less plastic, meaning I trim the brace back here, the brace is going to be a whole, uh, just a very different kind of brace, and the effect will be different. So I'm going to start from the back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, we'll say this is, this is the ankle, the apex of the ankle right there, and I want to create the brace called a flexible AFO. The brace itself is not necessarily flexible, but you could compare it to a solid ankle one, and it, in a relative sense, I suppose it would be more flexible, but when, when an orthotist uh, or brace person talks about a flexible AFO for foot drop, this is what they do. They trim back behind the ankle bone, and we'll just say it's in this general vicinity right here. Okay, so we're trimming behind that because we don't want to rub on a bone. That would that would not be fun for the patient or the orthotist. So this is what it, it turns out to be. Now everyone's slightly different in their connection between this point and the top part of the AFO but the basics of this is that it comes behind the ankle bone for a flexible AFO. And we would draw our lines up like this. So I'm just gonna cover some other ones before I start drawing too much and confuse anybody. A semi-rigid AFO, by many people's accounts, will come up more toward the ankle, but stay behind it. So we would be much closer here. That would be semi-rigid. Here's our flexible back here, our trim line back here. So flexible, semi-rigid. If we bisect the ankle, many people agree that that is what is termed rigid, and a solid would come in front of the ankle bone. Something like this. Okay. So a solid is very different than the amount of plastic here. I mean, that's, that's approximately two and a half, three inches of difference. So a flexible AFO, if we're coming back to this trim line, and we'll just bring it on up here. A flexible AFO is for someone that has basically foot drop. If someone's knee is more involved, what we try to do is get more involved at the ankle because the two are, are connected via bones and ligaments. So if someone's knee, is, it buckles when they walk or it hyperextends, you may think to go with a solid AFO 
and have more effect on that knee in a good way. And you can always trim back to a flexible after the patient has what we call return on their function. So this would be here the solid AFO, this would be the trim line for the flexible, and we'll turn this around here so you can get an idea of what the solid would look like. So right here is in front of the ankle bone. Okay, we're going to continue over our heights. Okay. Okay, so here's a solid AFO. So this person ha probably has a foot drop. And we also have to think about indirectly supporting the knee. So we need more control at the ankle. So I'm going to draw now the trim lines for the solid. So it would come up like this very different in its approach and then usually there's a little bit of a flare here like this okay so you can see the difference so it it's in front of the ankle bone here whereas back here this would be the flexible uh, so more or less foot drop oftentimes we can include a joint in a brace and it begins in what we call the pre-articulated stage and I'm going to show you one of these real quick. Here's another AFO right here and you can see the this particular joint is in there and that would be a pre-articulated and this is the plantar flexion stop before we cut it if we did cut it. Now there, there are bones all throughout the foot. It's kind of amazing how many bones there are. So what, what an orthotist will typically do is have, there's a big bone right here, your first metatarsal phalangeal joint. An orthotist doesn't want to rub right on that joint, no one's going to like that. So we stay behind that and now we start connecting our lines here. So this would be how the solid ankle AFO turns more into, uh, now we're going into the foot portion. So we have our height, comes all the way down here, stays behind the first metatarsal phalangeal joint in most cases, and now we have our foot plate. We're going to make it full length at first and then review the process of trimming it back as we fit the patient. There are times when we do want to come in front of that bone, the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. So we're going to come up like this. And the reason why is if a person in toes, they might have foot drop, but they might also bring their foot in and it hits the other foot when they walk. So we need to stop it from coming in. And if you can imagine, my hands are trying to stop at every step the person takes. So if I was going to do that, I would need something here to stop the in towing because this is the left foot we don't want the toe going in and then we would need a, something on the other side to help keep it straight the two opposing forces right there would help to do that for the patient and then there can be another three-point pressure system up here but these two points right here are very important this is a medial forefoot extension when it comes past the first metatarsal phalangeal joint here we're in front of the ankle bone here this is the solid ankle again Okay, so we're going to come up like this, and then we're, we're slowly connecting our, our lines, okay? Now, this is just a straight solid a AFO. If there's going to be a lateral tab here, if you can remember my hand being a portion that's trying to steady the leg here, and then this right here is something holding the leg straight we would add on that lateral tab. Some people call it by other names, but we'll call it a lateral tab, and that would just be something extra that we're doing to control varus and valgus alignment, okay? So that would be the add-on that we would do. And we'll show you that more on the patient. So now we're just going to continue on. We're bringing the lateral side of the, the uh, the trim lines down here
and we're coming behind this bone right here on the lateral side of the foot. And we'll make this again full foot as needed. The height of an AFO is very important. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. If a person snaps their knee back, if you can imagine a lever arm coming all the way up here, trying to do what it can to hold the leg straight so the knee that would be right here doesn't snap back. So we're trying to hold onto the bone like that. Another th reason why is we need all of this to offset what's going to be happening here. It's kind of like a, a lever in a sense. And we're trying to offset uh, so this from dragging down, this foot from dragging down. So if we have a longer lever arm here, we can spread out the pressure on the leg. You could bring these AFOs way down here, and we'll say if just for just for argument's sake that we made this AFO that height right there. You can imagine this distance right here trying to hold up this whole foot. That would hurt. That would press into that leg so much that that person would immediately stop wearing the AFO. So that's one of the, uh, another reason why we don't make AFOs that height. So we're going to trim this out now, and we're going to probably trim out the audio as well uh, later on. But we're going. This is how we kind of draw our trim lines. So remember, this is solid ankle in front of the ankle bone, right here. Flexible is back here, and that's more for a patient with foot drop. Now I'm going to start trimming this out. Okay, this would be the trimming out process. Now we just drew our lines on this before to kind of get it uh, a feel of the shape that we want. You never want to just cowboy it and I suppose just start cutting on this. Even after you know the years that I've been doing this, I still like to draw them out. So we're going to tighten up our, our vise here and get started.
everything looks pretty good here there's always if one little spots connected it's it'll hold the whole thing together still so we don't want to crack anything let's just have a look see here that looks like that's fairly well separated 